What's up everyone, welcome back to another video, and in this one I'm going to talk about Plotly. So Plotly is a plotting library for Python as well as a bunch of other languages, and the way it differs from matplotlib is it focuses on making things a lot more interactive and simplifies a lot of things or it implements things by default that might be a lot more difficult and time consuming in matplotlib. So to give you an example, I have a, a plot right here. So I have a few IPython widgets and I'm plotting some Bessel functions. So with the widgets, I have a multi-select so I can um, plot a number of them at one time. And then with the plot, you can see I get mouse over values for the Y and X values. Um, I get the I get a legend by default, and then I can just click on the legends to um, select and deselect the plots. The zoom is really cool. You get this uh, nice little animation or highlighting as you zoom. And then we've got all these tools up top. So we've got go back home. We can um, rescale the axes just by um, click and dragging. And yeah, so everything is, you know, really nice and interactive and it's not a lot of lines of code to make your plots do all this cool stuff. So I'm going to show you this example here. So let's get started. So Plotly doesn't come with Anaconda by default, so we're going to have to install it ourselves. So I'll add a link in the description, but you can just search Plotly and Python and then just come to getting started. And here you'll see the pip install. So just open up a command window, type pip install Plotly, and then you're ready to go. So Plotly is more than just a plotting library. It's actually a service. And what I mean by that is in order to use it in the online mode, you need to create a user profile and account. So when you start in your notebook, you'll need to provide your login credentials before you can start generating plots. So it's free to use, so don't worry about it. But the way it works is when you use your graph objects and say create a plot, it's actually sending a request to their servers and in return they'll send you the um, results in a HTML format. So um, you can read more about it here, um, how to like log in using your credentials and setting up your account and all that. And that's how you'll use, um, you'll use Plotly in online mode. And there's also a, like an editor in their browser. So you can just go to their site and um, you can edit your plots like right in the site and, um, you know, add mark markings and annotations and all that kind of stuff. And you can share your plots with other people. You can view others. So it's a pretty cool service, but the one I'm more interested in is the offline mode. So offline mode means your plots and data don't leave your computer. Everything's generated locally. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So to start, I'm going to jump over to Jupyter and I'm going to create a new notebook. So the first thing we do, like always, is our import statements. And in the documentation, I've noticed some inconsistencies how they do the imports. But this is how I do my imports for Plotly. So first thing we're going to do is import Plotly as py. Then we need to import our graph object. So we'll do import um, plotly.graphobjs as go. So this is going to be all the graphing stuff, like the figure, the scatter plots, the bubble plots, all those things. This one is, the top one is just for setting the online and offline mode. So the next thing I want to do is we're going to use widgets. So we'll do our import um, ipy widgets as widgets. Uh, and then we're also going to import numpy, oops, numpy as np. And then since we're using Bessel functions, we need to do an import from scipy. So from scipy, we're going to import special. So Bessel functions are special functions. So the next thing we need to do is set up our offline mode. Yeah, set up offline mode. So the way we do that is py offline dot init notebook mode and then we say connected equals true. So now when we run that our 
Our plotly is set up in offline mode. So now let's start with a super basic example just to see how plotly works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an x variable. So we'll just do um, lin space and we'll go from zero, oops, mp.py, and then we'll do 1000 points. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the layout graph object. So what I'll do is say layout is equal to go dot capital L layout. And then the way that Plotly documentation, their examples, they always have every item in the graph object as a new line. So I'm just going to do the same convention. I think it's kind of cool. So yeah, we go to a new line and then we tab over and then we start. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give it a title. So the title, let's just say, um, let's just call it simple example. And then um, for the Y axis, let's see, we'll also give it a title, but for the Y axis, we can't just list the title. So everything has to go into dictionary. So we'll do dict. And then same as before, we're going to go to a new line, tab over. And now we're going to say the title is going to be, let's say for the Y axis, let's make it in volts. And I think that's it for the Y axis. Now let's do the X axis. And that will also be equal to a dictionary. And we'll say the title will be, um, let's do nanoseconds. All right, so that's gonna be our layout. So now let's create our, our first trace. So typically what we do is we'll say, um, they'll call it like trace one. And that graph object will be go.scatter. And we will do our x is equal to x. And then our y, let's just keep it simple. Let's just do mp.sign. Um, of X and let's see what else should we put in there um, we'll give it a name so the name will be actually first we'll do the mode so for scatter there's three modes there's markers lines or markers plus lines and since we have a thousand points we don't want markers they'll just be too cluttered so we're just gonna do lines but if we wanted to, we would, if we wanted markers, we would say markers. And if we wanted both, we'd say lines plus markers. So we've got the mode. Let's give it a name. So we'll just call it sign of X. And then let's scroll up a little bit. So another thing too that we want to specify is, um, so we want to specify the interpolation and what interpolation is, is how the dots are connected with lines. So we can either do straight lines or we can do like staircase lines or we can do smooth, um, smooth lines. So the way I want to do it is with smooth lines. So lines going to be equal to a dict. And like always, we go to a new line and what it's called, the interpolation is called the shape. And in this case, we're going to do a spline. All right. So now our trace is done. So now let's create our, um, our figure. So we'll say fig is equal to another grab graph object called figure. And the data is going to be equal to a list. And the list is going to be all the trace objects or the traces. So it's just going to be trace one since we only have one. And then the layout is going to be equal to layout. And then finally, we need to show it. So to show this thing in offline mode, it's going to be py dot offline. And then I plot and we're just going to plot the figure. So let's run it. And we got something wrong here. E. Oh. All right, so here you can see our simple sign. And since we're only going from zero to pi, we're only getting half the sign. So you can see that we've got the title um, and the X and Y labels. And then just with this simple example, we're already getting the hover over values. 
and we've got that cool zoom feature. We've got the, um, the scaling, the panning. So I think if you go, yeah, here you can like rescale and then in the middle, it's like a shift or a pan. Same with this axis here and yep. So yeah, all that, all that cool stuff is built in, you know, with just a few lines of code, we're getting this really cool, um, plot with all these interactive tools. So yeah, that's like the simplest example I can think of. Now let's go to the more advanced one with widgets. So if you watched part four of my Jupyter Notebooks tutorial series, you saw that we used interactive to use widgets to link them to a function which would update our plot. And we're basically gonna be doing the exact same thing, except this time with Plotly. So what I need to do is create a function, um, put the stuff that needs to get updated, and then use interactive to link the widgets to that function. So the layout isn't gonna change, so this stuff doesn't need to go in the function, but this trace part will. So what I'm gonna do is create a function called update plot. And we're only gonna take in two things. We're gonna take in the, the signals and we're gonna take in the frequency. So now I need to tab this stuff over and actually I'm gonna need to tab it over twice cause we're gonna have a loop, a for loop for, um, for the multi-select um, widget that we're gonna use. So basically what I want to do is start by creating a list called data. So that's just going to be an empty list. That's going to, we're going to put all our traces in. So then we're going to do a for loop where it's going to be for S in signals. So that's going to signals is going to be all the items in the multi-select widget. So what we'll do is um, we're going to be using the, um, the Bessel functions. So the way those are is it's going to be special and then it's going to be J V. Um, J is like the symbol for the Bessel function. And so what we do is we're going to give it the order of it. So, um, S is going to be the order of the Bessel function. So we're going to pass that, um, here. And then it's going to be our, like our X variable. So it's going to be the frequency times X. So that's going to be our Y function. And then for the name, what we'll do is, um, let's do this. We'll do Bessel and then we'll format it to add the number cool. So there, I think that's, that's it for the, um, for the function. This stuff will also need to tab over cause it'll need to be updated when we call. And now let's just do the, let's do the widgets. So what we need to do is the signals is going to be our multi-select. So we're going to say signals is equal to widgets dot, um, select multiple and the options are going to be a list and that list is just going to be um, like zero to five. So I can just put six and then I get zero to five. So that is the options. I'm going to make the value equal to zero and um, let's just say this description is equal to um, the um, Bessel order. All right, so that's our multi-select. Next, we wanna make a float slider for the frequency. So again, we'll call it freak, and it'll be um, widgets.float um, slider, and min will be equal to one, max will be equal to 20, and the value will be equal to one. And then the description will be, um, we'll just call it freak again. All right. So the last step is to call interactive and then link these two widgets to the function. So again, we just need to call, um, widgets dot inter interactive. And then we first give it the function update plot. 
then we say um, we say which the which parameters are equal to what which widget. So we say signals is equal to signals, and then freak is equal to freak. All right. So now if we run this, we get an error. Let's see what we did. Oh, okay. So yeah, when you um when you give the value for signal, it has to be has to be a tuple. And I think this will work. All right, cool. So to make this a little easier to see, I'm just going to zoom out a bit and then rerun it so it resizes it. OK, cool. So now we can get everything in there. So now when I do my multi select, you can see it switches to a different um, Bessel function. And then because it's multi select, I can Hmm, that's not right. So we're doing something wrong. Frequency is working okay. And oh, I know what I did wrong. So let's jump back here. So what we're not doing is we're not appending. So data needs to be data. And then finally, um, data.append trace one. All right, so now this should work. So if I click on here and then start selecting multiple ones, you can see I get all of them. And then I can play with the frequency. And I get all the hover overs and I can do the resize. And yeah, I get all those cool, cool interactive plotly features with like you saw just just a few lines of code. So I think this is going to be it for this example. Um, if you've got any questions, like always, um, leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer. Um, don't forget, we've got the Facebook group. So feel free to comment or contact me directly with any questions or um, requests for help. So I hope you guys like this example. Um, I've really enjoyed using Potly so far. I think I'll be using it a lot more because you can see it, you get a lot of really cool features. Like I'm not sure how you would do this in Matplotlib to get all these hover overs and click on the legend and, you know, hide, hide the, um, the trace like that and all this resizing. So it's, yeah, I find it really cool and it, it, it just makes your plots a lot nicer and it's fun to interact with them. So if you're trying to make something for a website and, um, you want your users to actually, you know, play and explore and, um, look at the data a little closer, it, it really helps. And I think it's, you know, like I said, it's a really cool library. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Hit the subscribe button if you like the content. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.